Welcome to this Wing Club online module on pressure ulcer prevention using the Eskin Care Bundle, which forms part of a series you can access to develop your knowledge and understanding around wing care. Today we will, we will be discussing pressure ulcer prevention and the Eskin Care Bundle, as well as the Asking Educational Framework. You will come across the terms pressure injuries and pressure ulcers, and these can be used interchangeably. However, for the purpose of this presentation, we will use the term pressure ulcer. By the end of the module, you will be able to recognise the importance of pressure ulcer prevention, identify the components of the Eskin Care Bundle and the Asking Educational Framework. It is important to understand what defines an injury or wound as a pressure related, to therefore correctly diagnose the wound as a pressure ulcer. The cause of any wound is important in the assessment and appropriate planning to facilitate wound healing. Remember that if the wound is not caused by pressure, it should not be documented as a pressure ulcer. Therefore, a pressure ulcer is defined as localised damage to the skin and or underlying tissue. The ulcer is usually over a bony prominence, for example, heels or elbows. Let's look at the burden of pressure ulcers. According to the United Kingdom's National Institute for Healthcare Excellence, NICE, pressure ulcers are a major burden of sickness and reduce quality of life for people and their caregivers. They are estimated to occur in 4 to 10% of patients admitted to hospitals in the UK, and they can be debilitating for the patient. Pressure ulcers can lead to life-threatening complications. Therefore, I'm sure you will agree that recognising and understanding more around pressure ulcers will help to improve outcomes for patients. NICE found from death and severe harm incident reporting that pressure ulcers accounted for 19% of all patient safety incidences reported in 2011-2012. And yet we know that many pressure ulcers are preventable. NICE recommends use of a validated risk assessment tool to support clinical judgment in identifying those at risk. In pressure ulcer prevention, any patient identified as being at risk of developing a pressure ulcer in either an acute or community setting should have a pressure ulcer prevention care bundle. The implementation of a care bundle approach is recognised as an effective way of translating research into practice with positive outcomes for the patient. The bundle is designed to facilitate consistency in practice. The ESKIM model has a five element approach to countering risks of likely pressure ulcer damage. These are surface, skin inspection, keep moving, incontinence and moisture, nutrition and hydration. Pressure ulcers can develop in all age groups and in all care settings. And if not identified early, can develop into significant deep tissue injuries. So let's go through each of the steps in more detail to find out what each element of the care bundle involves. Surface. Selection of support surface. The use of support surfaces is one of the most common interventions for preventing pressure ulcers. These support surfaces can include mattresses, chairs, cushions, foot and heel protection and offloading devices. Skin inspection. Regularly inspecting a patient's skin to identify skin abnormalities is a key practice in pressure ulcer prevention. Basic knowledge of skin anatomy, which has been outlined in previous modules, will be a helpful refresher. The key objective is prevention, and so a skincare regime should include regular inspection of the skin for signs of damage. The patient's skin should be examined systematically from head to toe. Although pressure ulcers most commonly occur over bony prominences, they can also be found under medical devices such as masks or catheters. A patient's consent must be obtained prior to skin inspection. The acronym BEST SHOT from Stop the Pressure campaign is a useful reminder of specific areas of the body to check. B, buttocks, E, elbows, ears, S, sacrum, T, trochanters, S, spine, shoulders, H, heels, O, occipitate or others, T, toes. Skin should be checked for changes in colour, temperature or texture. In patients with darker skin, redness is not always obvious, so practitioners should look for a change of colour in the surrounding skin. 
If skin damage has occurred, then the assessment must include the condition of the wound bed, size and shape of wound, location, signs of infection, extradate levels, peri-wound condition, pain and malodor. A body map showing the position of the skin damage as well as a written description and photography is useful to record the size and severity of the damage. Device related pressure ulcers tend to occur as a result of a medical device being used as an essential part of the patient's treatment. Keep moving. This is crucial in pressure ulcer prevention. Regular body movement assists blood flow and helps redistribute pressure. Assessing the patient on identifying skin damage associated with increased moisture, often caused by incontinence, is an essential part of good skin care. For more information on moisture associated skin damage and incontinence associated dermatitis, please view the Wound Club online modules which focus and provide more details on these topics. Dietary deficiencies are a recognised risk of developing pressure ulcers and guidance recommends using a nutritional screening tool to assess risk factors, including malnutrition. For more information on each of these S skin areas, please view the revalidation version of this module. So that's the S-Skin bundle, so what about asking? When developing the core curriculum for pressure ulcers, NHS Improvement felt that two additional elements needed to be added to the educational framework. Therefore, the educational framework surrounding the S-Skin care bundle was expanded to asking and included two additional steps for healthcare professionals to consider, assessing risk and giving information. The reason for conducting a risk assessment is to identify patients at risk of developing pressure ulcers and to assist in planning interventions to reduce the risk. Communication issues commonly feature in root cause analysis of pressure ulcer incidents. Information may be given to patients and carers verbally or in a more structured way as through leaflets, videos or apps. So to recap, ESKIN is a five-step care bundle and asking is the educational framework around it to prevent and treat pressure ulcers. The main aims of ESKIN are to reduce pressure, shear and friction by using a suitable support surface, inspect and assess skin regularly, optimise movement, optimise skin moisture levels, promote adequate nutrition and hydration. The S-Skin Bundle is a widely used tool that helps clinicians communicate with a multidisciplinary team and with patients and carers to help them understand the risks of developing a pressure ulcer. To check your knowledge and understanding, try and answer the quiz questions. Well done, you have now completed this bite-sized module. Take the time to reflect on how you would take some of what you have learnt and apply it to your daily practice. Please click on the link in the description below to go to the full 15 minute version of this presentation. Once this is completed, you will have the opportunity to download CPD revalidation forms. Thank you for your time today. Please remember to look at the other sections to access additional modules to help you on your learning journey.